The Service and Operations Manual outlines some of the safety considerations. Remember, if you are unsure, consult your organization. The e-stop must be operated by a designated competent operator within the scope of on-site operation parameters, such as the company's safe work method statement or risk assessment. Be installed in a suitable location clear of obstructions. An appropriate risk assessment shall be conducted to ensure the safe and suitable use of the e-stop. Examples of factors to consider include safe distance from the traffic path so that wide loads or turning vehicles will not impact the unit, length of work site, volume of traffic, and topography. Be installed on a stable surface. The batteries shall be fully charged before operating the unit. The e-stop is safety equipment. It must be used at all times as per the manufacturer's instructions and as per the DTMR's guidelines. All equipment supplied must not be tampered with as it may impact the performance of the e-stop and voids factory warranty. This includes opening of the hand controls or the battery supplied. Your e-stop will either arrive in a bag or stored in a traffic control ute box. The total weight of the bag is 17 kilograms and should be lifted off and onto a vehicle with a two-person lift. Note that the heaviest component is the lantern, weighing 8 kilograms. Once unpacked, prepare the tripod leg for mounting. These legs are locked in to ensure they do not fall down and hurt anyone standing near. When unlocked, ensure to allow the legs to slide into position at a slow, controlled pace. These legs are height adjustable. The first hole on this leg is set to 1.6 meters from the base of lantern to ground. The minimum requirement is 1.5 meters. To adjust the height, pull the lever out, pull the leg up and the lever will clip in automatically. You will hear a sound as the lever is placed into the hole of the pole. You will notice one leg has a pin and a number of holes. This is to allow adjustments on uneven road surfaces to maintain vertical stability. We suggest that two sandbags be placed on each tripod leg. This is important to ensure the unit does not get blown away. When operating in high winds, it is advisable to place three sandbags on each leg. Join the battery pole with the lantern. The battery case can be placed in the same or opposite direction of the shrouds. Secure them in tightly. Use the handle provided to assist with lifting. The red light indicator is an important component. This flashing amber light communicates to the workers on the job site when the red lantern is on. This informs them that they may proceed to work with caution. This red light indicator must be adjusted to face the work site and not the motorists. You are now ready to mount this part to the tripod leg, ensuring that the lantern is faced away from motorists during setup. The battery should be fully charged after every shift and the battery status should be checked prior to bringing the units to site. Using the handle provided, place the batteries into the battery case. Secure the batteries in place by locking them down. The locking mechanism allows for locks to be placed for security reasons. Before you connect the battery power to the e-stop lanterns, please ensure that the unit is off. These pins, like any other power connection, have a positive and negative point. If the points contact each other incorrectly, it may cause the unit to short circuit. Thus, it is important to ensure the unit is off before connection occurs. There is a hinge in the socket to ensure that each point is correctly connected. Once in, secure the connection in place firmly. The power button is at the bottom of the e-stop lantern. A green LED light will turn on to indicate the e-stop lantern is on and ready for use. This is also the emergency cutoff button when required to turn the unit off quickly.